guest speaker for today's podcast is Mr. Krishna Kumar. He has a whole lot of experience in different sectors, starting with FMCG companies like Johnson Johnson, Colgate Palmolive, and switching on to logistic companies, the well-known multinational brand Maersk and Tanu Logistics. Worked in India as well as in GCC, that is Gulf countries. And he now runs his consultancy company. He's worked earlier in these companies in the capacity of CEO and director also. And he has turned around companies and we're going to see how he did all this and how this can be applied to real estate. Of course, logistics and warehouse is an integral part of real estate. Without much ado, let us welcome Mr. Krishna Kumar. Mr. Krishna Kumar, welcome to the podcast. It's a pleasure having you with us today and speaking to our viewers about uh, your experience. Both uh, lama experience in uh, marketing and uh, strategy planning. Mein. So we would definitely like to hear everything about what you have till now. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Kishanji, for inviting me to your special show. I would like to congratulate you at the outset for crossing 10,000 subscribers. May you cross a million soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, Sir, sure. uh, let me uh, let us know about your uh, journey from logistics to strategy planning. It's It's been a very varied uh, uh, experience. Uh, please let us know about this. Sure. Well, uh, Kishanji, I was only 19 years old when I joined Johnson & Johnson where I spent 10 years shaping up my corporate personality, being the first multinational company that I worked for in my career. And after that 10 years, I spent a couple of years with Colgate Palmolive and both are manufacturing uh, companies of uh, FMCG goods. Joining the shipping industry, oh, kismet ka khel tha, that mm. I got an opportunity in the Middle East with Maersk and then I came over. Uh, but then we all have to make the best out of what we have. We don't have much choices in life when we have started so early in life. So Maersk Line, the world's largest shipping line and logistics company, is a Scandinavian Danish company, was the best decision I ever made. You see, logistics is one industry that touches every single other industry. Even if you are in a service business, logistics plays a vital role through unseen. Mm. channels. See, I'm a fellow member of the Institute of Cost Accountants of India. And I discovered very early on in my 20s that while I was qualified as an accountant, mere andar mein jo tha, wo kida business development ka tha. Wo mera core nature. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the bold chance, sir. I told my Danish partners that we want shift karna chahte hai, CFO se business development. Ko. But that mm. decision was right. Because as I grew up to the position of uh, managing director for Middle East and later director for South Asia and Maersk for its inland services. So it was a rewarding experience. That is how I ended up spending nearly 30 plus years in the logistics industry. Real estate industry, sir, is no exception to the law that logistics and supply chain plays a crucial role in its success or its failure. I'm sure we'll talk about it as we go on. Go on. Sure. Yeah. Yes, and uh, today logistics and uh, uh, this industry, warehousing, it's uh, taking center stage. And a lot of uh, players are entering the uh, fray now. And yep. uh, of course, the demand for land and building and everything is increasing on that sector. Absolutely. So, so it's amazing. So how do you think your experience as a CEO of uh, Kanu Logistics and the director of Musk uh, 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 informs your uh, perspective? Well, Kishanji, in my opinion, it does not matter if you are managing a business uh, like a service industry, like logistics or a manufacturing or doctor's clinic, or maybe a hairdressing salon down the road. Anything that needs managing must be managed well. I think too many startup companies, sir, you know, I know, what startup companies, mein kya hota hai? youngsters, they suddenly call themselves CEO or director uh, without having the experience of to the, the grind through the organizations. Mm -hmm. And then whether that is correct or not, then I'm not sure it is up for debate, but I think I put in a huge amount of effort in learning the art of managing. My employers mm -hmm. invested in me and I was very, very lucky there. And I must say, I was fortunate to work for World Brands who believed in the importance of investing in its employees. In my corporate journey, sir, I have turned around four large businesses from loss making to highly profitable. That I think is how you as a brand start to work. Once you get the hang of what to do, what to look for, how to manage costs and top line, therefore the bottom line, that is simply called strategizing. And that's where the journey starts. You know, the so, single core mistake most managers make is to understand yeah. the magic recipe. 
it is mm. never about you it is always about people and managing available resources logistics mm. and supply chain management is essentially about that managing resources and maximizing its potential so resources uh, in uh, real estate development is also the same thing hena sir so absolutely a, yeah, yeah a successful ceo is someone who is able to understand the importance of managing resources to achieve the greatest potential of its outcome with people being the most important ingredient again the industry you are in sir that is real estate is absolutely crying and dying to understand this that mm. a, a company like that whether it is a broker company brokerage company or a real estate development company a small parcel mm. of land it requires a management as if you are the ceo so in my experience as an investor in real estate of all kinds and being the user of real estate in my corporate career i can tell you that this is a very sad fact which needs to be you know humko ye iski iski garaz jaanni zaruri hai ki humko ye pehchanni zaruri hai ki humko company ki tarah chalana hai logon ko resource ki tarah manage karna hai hmm uh you spoke about uh, turning around four companies uh, would you like to tell us little bit about about these companies <clears throat> well sir uh, the the day i decided that i will leave finance role and go into business development yeah. i hit upon my greatest success that is unilever now unilever in the middle east uh, i managed to get them as a customer and this is a multi million dollar contract and the reason that happened is because i investigated their problems i traveled to all the gcc countries unka problems samajh ke liya baad mein unko maine presentation kiya aur presentation mein jo ab ke jo chairman aur president jo retire ho chuke hain mr mehta sanjeev mehta wo tab commercial manager the us waqt and wo unhone mujhe mauka diya कि जब मैंने उनको कहा कि अगर इफ यू लिसन टू मी फॉर फाइव मिनट्स यू विल सेव टेन मिलियन डॉलर्स फॉर योर कंपनी एंड देन ही वाज ऑल इयर्स एंड दैट्स हाउ इट हैपेंड एंड देन आई गॉट द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू टेक ओवर अ कंपनी व्हिच वाज नॉट डूइंग वेल इट वाज मेकिंग लॉसेस एंड द मैनेजमेंट हैड फेथ इन मी आई वाज अ फर्स्ट इंडियन मैनेजर आफ्टर अ सीरीज ऑफ डच मैनेजर्स वेस्टर्न मैनेजर्स एंड आई मैनेज टू टर्न द कंपनी अराउंड एंड आई टेल यू द ओनली रीजन आई कुड डू दैट इज बिकॉज ऑफ माय एबिलिटी टू रिलेट टू पीपल so people 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 and therefore one led to the other and i got four large opportunities to turn these business around within mersk and within a large multi billion dollar company called the kanu group in the middle east so that's how it happened uh, indian minds are one of the sharpest minds in the world as they say uh, indian ceos or mds ne kafi companies ko turn around kiya hai us ke Uh, I do remember Mr. Vikram Pandey that turned around Citibank when it was about to fall in the US in 2008. Yeah. Lehman Brothers happens, yeah. and a yeah. uh, uh, whole lot of uh, stories are there. So I'm sure uh, Indian minds are great, and you have done the same work for this company. Ke liye. Absolutely, sir. Mauka mila. I have not left it. Amazing, <laughs> sir. Uh, about the uh, we were talking about real estate. So how can real estate developers and investors? leverage logistic expertise to enhance their projects this is need See, of the art ye yeah. industry ab uh, they say it's only tip of the iceberg ab ye b- aur badi banegi it's going to grow to a large uh, uh, section of uh, from large large section of uh, the real estate chunk so uh, kya kis tarah ho sakta hai so let's draw the parallels between logistics and real estate uh, yeah. basically supply chain management i will start off sir with a great example of a business that glares at us on a daily basis which uses real estate and supply chain management to make its business successful and its brand successful you know i'm okay. talking about mcdonalds now yeah. mcdonalds has over 30 billion dollars in real estate assets and yeah. owns the land for all its restaurants remember mm. mcdonald ke paas 40000 locations hai sau country mein mm. lekin real estate उनका रेंटल इनकम है 7.3 बिलियन डॉलर्स, विच इज 38 परसेंट ऑफ इट्स टोटल ओवरऑल रेवेन्यू व्हाट इट डस इज वो लोग लैंड खरीदते हैं और लैंड को कभी कभी डेवलप करते हैं और उनको फ्रेंचाइजिस को ऑफर करते हैं और उनको रेंट मिलता है 95 परसेंट ऑफ मैकडोनल्ड आउटलेट आर मैनेज बाई फ्रेंचाइसिस Hmm. so this is one of the largest real estate companies you must have looked at mcdonald's as a food place a cool mm-hmm. place to go and eat burgers but you must oh. look at it as a real estate company now yes to answer your question what parallels do i see between logistics and supply chain management of real estate you know simply put a real estate developer 
has a huge task of managing the supply chain that consists of raw material like steel, concrete, and its various vendors, including electrical, plumbing, and the people such as laborers, architects, engineers, municipal authorities, MSEB, lawyers, real estate brokers, and they had to do the magic of converting material into a residential building. Now, this is a phenomenal supply chain. And actually, the core of the real estate business is about managing time and supply. And this indeed is the art of supply chain management. But you know, sir, many jana hai itne sare real estate companies ke saath mein baat karke ke no real estate company, none of the real estate companies that I have met and known yeah. have yeah. a supply chain manager. They mm. do not have a supply chain department. And that is the greatest need of the art. If money and time can be equated, then you must realize that time is money. And therefore, supply chain management in a real estate company is the most crucial element of their operation. Now, you may have a project manager or a site manager or a host of other managers who are engineers, who are, but none of them are a supply chain expert. So, there are socho's ki barame. And I think we need to encourage real estate companies to think in these lines. So, so uh, uh, yeah. you know the uh, you know the landscape of real estate. Aapko brokerage business bhi pata hai. I mean, it's uh, it's not hidden. Or yeah. uh, developers ka business bhi pata hai. So, how do you think supply chain kis tarah isme establish ki ja sakti hai? Since you're a strategy planner, so you would have thought this through compared to anybody else. Sure. No, absolutely. I get hired by companies in order to manage uh, strategy for them or help them with strategy. So, let me... Um, give some secrets away. And I think real estate, as I understand, comprises of four segments. Correct me if I'm wrong, sir. See, one is residential, the other yeah. is hospitality, yeah. another is retail, and the fourth is commercial, according to what I generally understand. Yeah. Real so now, now there are more uh, more segments added, uh, more verticals added to this. Uh -huh. uh, for example, uh, this pre-lease asset is another one where people want to uh, make uh, their uh, revenue, you know, return on investment. Yeah. So they buy pre-lease properties and already pre that is pre-tenanted properties and the rents start from day one. So instead right. of keeping an FD in their bank, this is how they invest. Yeah. segment open or then second homes. I mean, all those segments, though, those a person can think of logistics, hai, warehouse, hai, uh, land, hai, industrial uh, sheds. Yes, all segments are open. Ho uh, so I, I broadly con com com categorize them as commercial. Now, the application yeah. of these could be for living. Doing business, yeah. storing yeah. material, or accommodating people either for health, like hospitals, mm -hmm. or yeah. for pleasure, like a hotel or resort. Hotel. Or yeah. you could do be an investor on your own and manage to sell land, which is primary to the real estate. Yeah. Now, uh, how does logistics apply? Now, if you wish to understand logistics from a real estate perspective, Shanji, mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. about real estate as a storage activity. In a rather crude way, let us say that you store people, you store finished goods, you store raw material, or activities mm. in the structures you build. If you look at it that way, now in the real estate development, then the just-in-time principle delivery uh, is, is a trick which is used. And it could be great success or it could be the reason for the greatest failure in your business if you don't manage the stocks correctly. Most of the time, what happens? I have seen contractors or, or real estate developers are going to buy money when they have a garage. Then they run after the supplier and then everything becomes delayed and uh, people are employed in other jobs. So they find it difficult to source the people. So planning supply chain management of a real estate project development is crucial. Now what I mean is developers order material, people as when they need. But then in the meantime, costs go up. Availability becomes scarce for whatever reasons. Ensuring a continuous supply of raw materials, service providers, labor, is, this is the secret of supply chain management. So, this is what you serious to do. So, there are many, many tools, sir. One can employ such as PERT and CPM, critical path method, or many, many other valuable methods. The, the point that I'm trying to make is that money is invested and there is cost to the money. I think developers spend too much time managing the supply of money efficiently rather than managing the supply chain equally effectively. Mm. Now, sir, ek, ek baat kehun, ke the, the industry, as you said, is growing. It is expected to reach one trillion US, US dollars very soon in the next couple yeah. of years, which means that you are going to contribute 15% to the GDP, which is a yeah. huge money. Now, with yeah. over 80 million people employed in this uh, real estate sector, isn't it imperative that one should manage the business with the greatest merit? Now, the only way to achieve is think 
act and behave like a CEO. Train them to understand the importance of supply chain and the value of great management or the time cost of mismanagement. Now, mm. managing is require ever changing. For example, government authorities have uh, uh, rules change the aviation authority ka approval chahiye, ye chahiye, wo chahiye. So these change the dynamics of delivery. Now it could be like it could, if you want to compare it with a very simplest example of a day-to-day, -day, it's like a washroom. आप जब वॉशरूम यूज करते हो तो आप अंदर जाके अपना काम करके बाद में पानी और टिश्यू रोल ढूंढते हो या कि पहले मेक श्योर sure करते हो कि पानी चल रहा है और टिश्यू रोल्स वो है उसके बाद में आप वॉशरूम जाते हो सो दैट्स द एग्जांपल आई कैन टेल यू द लॉट ऑफ बिग नेम्स आई नो आर येट टू स्पेंड मनी इन टेक्नोलॉजी प्रोसेस मेथड्स क्वालिटी उनके पास स्टैंडर्डाइज फॉर्म्स नहीं है now ever changing people people are constantly leaving so new trainees now the greatest investment in the industry of real estate today is smooth talking sales people and great social ads social mm -hmm. media ads now even car showrooms have um, smooth talking sales guys sir but remember yeah. that uske piche japanese cars hai european cars are indian cars hai which have got fantastic process management in place so yeah. i think i have tried to explain the relevance and importance of supply chain um, in the real estate industry yeah so this this may be uh, another reason uh, attributed to uh, this industry not getting uh, the status of an industry real estate is contributing to the gdp to the uh, to the employment but aaj tak real estate ko industry status nahi diya they still have to borrow funds uh, from external uh, sources at a very expensive price and at the end of the day customers or buyers have to bear the brunt of this see influencers like you need to raise your voice and address it to the government somebody like nitin gadkari has to understand that along with his uh, importance of uh, transport management road development etc usse juda hua real estate hai and i think uh, there is one single thing that will describe why real estate industry is considered um, a very low kind of business model and mm -hmm. that is because there is no education qualification university qualification real estate Correct. it is time it is time that real mm -hmm. estate is pursued as an university option so mm -hmm. that people come out professionals mm -hmm. who come into the industry with, with the right attitude and knowledge yeah we are i think uh, what you said is 100% right we we have a national association of realtors india where we we uh, uh, we represent all of uh, the country on the brokerage side and uh, we have raised our uh, uh, voices to the government and uh, rera was introduced rera was being planned earlier we uh, we but we pushed it uh, it has it has happened we pushed for the exams exams have happened in maharashtra at least we have taken that lead to make sure that exams happen so i'm sure ye brokerage side mein hua hai uh, construction side mein bhi this discipline discipline would come in Uh, there are uh, universities not many but kuch hain jo ye courses run karti hain youngsters are wanting to understand get into that kind of an uh, uh, understanding it has got to come as an as a three year full fledged course uh, mm. university degree course and that's mm. the only way logistics also did not have sir there never was a course but now today after all this uh, education that we people have raised uh, logistics is now a full fledged course university degree course amazing very yeah. nice and uh, there is a very very valid uh, point that you brought out because jab tak education nahi hoga tab tak samajh nahi hogi ek bar education aa jayega to people will start understanding and they'll start moving on that on those uh, uh, lines on that direction and that will help the industry to grow to uh, for the youngsters or people who are into that sector to understand the responsibilities and uh, uh, no, imagine sir a, 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 a three year degree course which has got a basic civil engineering basic yeah. marketing all those as part of the course so the understanding of the entire business is multifold yeah yeah so um, what are your thoughts on the current state of real estate market particularly in warehousing and uh, logistics field in india sir we are we are talking about india now the availability of top class facilities to store that is high end warehousing is only limited to major manufacturers if it is a major chemical company is chevron if it is um, um, dow corning unke paas facilities hai because they they are international companies and they have standards to achieve now however there is a complete lack of infrastructure to support the supply chain industry 
मोस्ट ऑफ द कंपनीज यूज अवेलेबल रिसोर्स उनके पास स्टैंडर्ड नहीं है ना इनफैक्ट एच एस एस सी सेफ्टी रिक्वायरमेंट इतना कॉम्प्लेक्स है इंडस्ट्री में दैट बड़े बड़े कंपनीज के पास स्टैंडर्ड तो है लेकिन उसको कंप्लायंस करने वाले सप्लायर्स नहीं है रियल इस्टेट नहीं है तो उसका मतलब है उनको कॉम्प्रोमाइज करना ही पड़ेगा और सब स्टैंडर्ड्स हैं तो उनको कॉस्ट भी चीप चाहिए अभी कॉस्ट चीप चाहिए तो स्टैंडर्ड्स में कॉम्प्रोमाइज करना पड़ेगा देर इज नो वे टू डिटरमाइन दबिलिटी और सप्लाई ऑफ दिस वेयर हाउसेज कहाँ पे वेयर हाउस है कितने बड़े हैं कितना खाली है इफ आई वो टू रिवील अट टू स्टार्ट अप कंपनीज आई थिंक द ग्रेटेस्ट अपॉर्चुनिटी इन द इंडस्ट्री lies in the uberization of warehousing dividing hmm. these resources in terms of class or application or state of maintenance or availability agar ek uber jaisa sophisticated app hai aur yeah. uh, jisko requirement hai agar unko pata chale mujhe pune mein itna sara warehouse pallet position chahiye mujhe pura warehouse nahi chahiye mujhe uh, 10000 pallet position chahiye 1000 pallet position chahiye aur usko store karne ke liye ye ye real estate um, creations are available in this area that i want then that is going to ensure high utilization and the right prices can you believe mm-hmm. that um, the total square meters of warehouses available in the country is 400 billion square feet actually mm-hmm. humko chahiye 600 million but wo figure bhi galat hai kyunki ये सारे वेयर हाउसेज आर ऑपरेटिंग लेस देन फिफ्टी परसेंट कैपेसिटी अगर हम लोग ये उबर के ऐप के जरिए और ऑल वेयर हाउसेज गेट फुल देन यू डोंट नीड न्यू वेयर हाउसेज और वी डोंट नीड एज मेन यू नीड बेटर वेयर हाउसेज फॉर श्योर रिमेम्बर द ट्रांसपोर्ट इंडस्ट्री दैट फॉर आई कीप टॉकिंग अबाउट नितिन गडकरी उनसे बात करना बहुत बहुत जरूरी है बिकॉज द एबिलिटी ऑफ द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर टू क्रिएट हाई क्वालिटी Uh, real estate for warehousing and other facilities open yard that is the way to go and that that can only happen if you know people like you take a visit to belgium uh, to holland and all these places to see how important logistics and real estate relationship is and how well they uh, are catered to in the overseas country then you may draw some inspiration so therefore i always tell my uh, friends and especially people like you who are my friend for many years that when you make a holiday plan imagine you are going to europe or wherever which other country make it a plan to combine your business needs also to go and see around for yourself one day ke wahan pe kaisa chal raha hai how is business managed how is real estate managed amazing yeah sure uh, uh talking about this uh, how do you think the government's regulations and policies are affecting uh warehousing and logistics and what new policies uh, should be brought in to strengthen or help doing this um in my experience and limited knowledge that i have over 40 years in this field um what i have realized is that the cost of logistics is the most important cost in any product aap product manufacture karte ho kahin bhi lekin usko customer tak pahunchane ke liye aapko bahut sara paisa kharcha karna padta hai and that goes to the customer already automatically now the developed countries ke jo logistics cost to gdp ratio hai that is only 8% 8% okay. only the logistics hmm. cost however in india it is 13% which means that 320 billion us dollars jo apna logistics cost hai can come down by nearly 5 to 6% which is a huge sum of money if yeah. the infrastructure is right why is it happening because most of the freight in the country moves by road they are working on coastal transport but that is only in the making now the roads are congested you know traffic har yeah. jagah hai pollution high hai trucks ke conditions bahut kharab hai location of warehouse bahut purani jagah mein kise pe jagah mein hai roads are in bad condition ye sab industry ko affect karta hai aur ye sab ungliyan ek taraf point karti hai real estate now therefore mm-hmm. the products made in india cost more why due to a play between time and cost of managing why is chinese uh, product so so cheap that is because they manage the logistics cost much more efficiently and how does that happen because uh, warehouses and the state of art uh, real estate open facilities yeah. they have is and the port now i'll tell you if you go down to uh, the ports of india you will know for your yourself that the breakdown of system the infrastructure is not good technology is poor planning is not there and similarly agar aap warehouse jahan jahan hai agar aap uh, if you visit them then you will know that there is a crying demand and then the government policies and regulations need to focus on this building roads of good quality making sure that yeah. rera is able to dictate uh, terms 
to the contractors that this is how the structure should be made and this is the fundamental thing to grow to india now if you go to ramtekdi sir apne paas mein ye do 6 km mein wahan ja ke dekho how is the infrastructure and why would anyone put uh, money in an expensive uh, warehouse yeah so i think uh, uh, ek cheez missing hai mere khayal se government is not talking to real estate players to ask them their opinion when is the last time sir aapne government ke sath mein koi bhi level pe local level pe ya सेंट्रल लेवल पे आपने उनके साथ गुफ्तु की है आपने उनके साथ बात करके अपने राय प्रस्तुत किया हो दो आवर डेवलपर्स बॉडी क्रेडाई हैज वेरी गुड हैंडल ऑन दैट एंड दे बिन लॉबिंग अराउंड फॉर थिंग्स लाइक व्हाट इज जस्ट सेड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एंड बेटर फेसिलिटीज फॉर मूवमेंट ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्ट एंड एवरीथिंग so i am sure uh, what you said is 100% right it, uh, unlike the developed countries india mein ye thoda kam dekha gaya hai but uh, ummeed pe duniya kaam hai to hum hame bhi ummeed hai ki ye badhega ab ab main aapko ek example deta hu dubai ki aur other middle eastern european countries ka main aapko ek simple example deta hu wahan pe ek industrial city bana raha hai bana rahe the industrial city mein banane ke pehle before allocating plots to real estate builders what the government did was first build the roads light set up a municipal hospital set up clinics set up a fire brigade set up uh, all uh, wifi facilities everything once they were ready then they invited real estate developers to come and buy land yeah so who who would not buy land in these places yeah when the infra is ready uh, it's all it's all all the more better for the developer to go and uh, start their business yeah. unlike in india yahan kya hota hai सारा डेवलपर के मथे मारा जाता है कि भाई ये रोड बनाना ये आप ही बनाओ हमारा तो आराम से बनेगा यू यू स्टार्ट अगर आपको जल्दी है तो आप बना लो बट देन यू आर ऑलरेडी चार्जिंग दैट इन द डेवलपमेंट चार्जेस आपने सारे पैसे तो ले लिए हैं उसमें तो रोड हम क्यों बनाए रोड तो आपका काम है ना सिविक एम्यूनिटीज तो आप ही दोगे ना पानी का पता नहीं है यू नो दिस इज वेरी सैड स्टेट ऑफ कंडीशन बट इज ट्रू आई थिंक सोच में बदल आना चाहिए हाँ सो लेट सोप वो दिन भी दूर नहीं है कि ये भी हो जाएगा सो कमिंग बैक टू आवर नेक्स्ट वन वी स्पोक अबाउट द एडवाइस टू रियल एस्टेट एक्टिव रियल एस्टेट डेवलपर्स हुआ क्राफ्टिंग इफेक्टिव बिजनेस प्लान इन एज अ स्ट्रेटेजी प्लानर वॉट काइंड ऑफ एन एडवाइस वुड यू वॉन्ट टू गिव सो यू ऑलरेडी स्पोक अबाउट दैट सो यू वॉन्ट टू एड समथिंग टू दैट Yeah, I, I I would like to add an important fact. See, I have got my own consulting company, and I offer these services to many companies. The thing is, businesses which are small and medium in various yeah. industry segment doesn't matter which industry. Sure. The, it is abs. The conspicuous by its absence in startup and in established company one thing, and that is a well documented dynamic strategy. But dynamic, I did not mean that you have written a beautiful strategy story and left it on the computer and left it in the drawer. Nay, hmm. how do you communicate your strategy to the entire team of people you are working? Who understand, like your employees, yeah. your vendors, your customers, your stakeholders, and how do you ensure that is understood by even the workers sitting in your office, the office boy? Okay, how do you make sure that your strategy is constantly revised to meet changing business regulations? Yeah. Now, this is something that um, is is missing, and I think uh, uh, we need to. Uh, it's like digging a tunnel to reach the other end in if you do not have a proper strategy communicated you'll have many yeah. holes made inside but nothing reaching to the other end hmm yeah yeah so uh, but then uh, people like you who know uh, the strategy planning and i'm i'm seeing a lot of developers now are employing these kind of resources or consulting uh, uh, people like you to uh, to become more effective and better than their uh, peers absolutely i mean this is essential and it is i'm glad that you're saying this because finally if realization has come in and one yeah. has started then i think yeah. it will have long term gains absolutely uh, sir about uh, the investors because investors form a very important uh, part of any uh, real estate investment as you know uh, in absence of uh, uh, bank funding jaise uh, बड़े कंपनीज को तो बैंक फंड कर देती है डेवलपर कंपनीज को बट बट मिडिल और छोटे डेवलपर्स दे ग्रैपल फॉर फंडिंग एंड दे रू नॉट गेट लाइक एस एट इंडस्ट्री स्टेटस अभी तक नहीं है हमारे डेवलपर्स को रियल एस्टेट इंडस्ट्री को सो वॉट डू यू थिंक हाउ कैन द रियल एस्टेट इन्वेस्टर्स बैलेंस शॉर्ट टर्म गोल्स विद लॉन्ग टर्म स्ट्रेटेजी गोल्स इट्स इट्स अ वेरी सिंपल क्वेश्चन बट अ वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स आंसर बट देन यू नो द 
the the most important thing for investors to realize is aapke portfolio mein aap khud ke portfolio mein kashin ji aapne mutual fund mein invest kiya hoga aapne shares mein invest kiya hoga real estate mein invest kiya hoga aur jagah jagah mein invest kiya hoga aur aapne debt mein bhi invest kiya government bonds mein isme se kyun kyunki you want certain portion of your investment to fetch steady consistent long term returns maybe for the first 2 years 3 years it may not uh, fetch heavy returns but eventually if you have the staying power and patience it will fetch you uh, bigger returns so i would strongly suggest that investors don't put all your eggs in one basket but certainly in the real estate uh, investment put that sum of money which you are able to miss for the next couple of years because patience is the name of the game in real estate aap agar jaake wahan site pe khade honge ki kyun nahi bana wo kyun nahi bana mere paise kab aayenge to then you will be always stressed and you might end up in the hospital so i think uh, it is important that real estate investors understand the the importance of long term gains and and balance it with short term gains and other other avenues that they want to very nice very very nicely said uh, uh, krishna kumar ji <clears throat> on the same lines uh, yeah uh we'll we'll uh, uh, talk about some innovation and technological uh, uh, uh factors how sure. do you see this technology like blockchain iot ai disrupting the real estate industry well disruption is the greatest quality of technology isn't it now however it is, one must realize that real estate is a physical activity it is nothing mm-hmm. to do with it is not a software running a business it's a real thing you can touch feel see it and perhaps smell it also not disruption mm. through modern technological technological jargons of ai will happen but however through the management of processes for example if you employ ai in the real estate industry your your contract drafting becomes easy that and various process reminders become easy accounting mm. becomes easy and so what happens is you will reduce the number of people engaged in doing these things and employ them in productive Uh, lines of businesses uh, within the within the real estate now internet of things or iot will play a tremendous role and i am predicting this now that tomorrow when things get better imagine you are implanting a chip in a raw material to track its delivery or implanting mm-hmm. in the facility itself in various locations within the flat or in various slabs or in the uh, sewage wherever various places to determine physical failures collect data amount of water passing through uh, amount of sewage passing through where is the clogage uh, clogging happening and to calculate the density or strength of the material so that it becomes easier for the consultant to determine okay what is the weight and what is a, a concrete element and what is a mix etc now you will be able to run diagnostic tests regularly to determine issues with the construction i think blockchain uh, although slightly misunderstood is a simple format and that can be a great tool for the real estate industry imagine you are able to control the entire process right from clearing from the factory the material to coming to your site preparing smart contracts transparency imagine you are able to uh, account uh, accountability is defined agar aapne isko quality assurance kara hai aap you are able to forecast ke baba ye sab particular product uh, material is coming late or it is going to take more time than design so how does this reforecast and how do you advance order how do you book orders Uh, so how do you rent warehouses to stock so that you take advantage of uh, uh, rising steel prices etc so hmm. all these can be done through blockchain and it hmm. is a phenomenal tool trust me hmm. but i think ab tak blockchain ko bada alag alag dhang se misunderstood kiya gaya hai misunderstand kiya gaya hai usko samajhna zaruri hai ha isko samajhna bahut zaruri hai it's a it's a deep subject yeah uh my next one is on the role that logistics can play in shaping the future of uh, smart cities and uh, urban development because smart cities i have been uh, talking quite a bit uh, we've got about uh, the pm had announced about 100 smart cities in the country as when i taken office so uh-huh. what what do you think uh, is the role of logistics in this may i ask you when was this promise made of 100 smart cities 2000 uh, uh, i think around the same time 2014 2015 so it's 10 years now and we still don't have it correct we don't so, have it here yeah. uh, so yeah so so i think uh, the probably the government is addressing the problem in in the wrong way and i would like to appeal to you as one of the leaders in this industry to to think about this that accessibility smooth transportation creating reach 
finding places that can be developed to decongest the cities and urban areas, combine it with technology, then make it smart. So this is what the main background is. And that's what is uh, needs to be done first. Now, I think mm. uh, my recommendation can be stated with an example. If you want to determine availability of a bore well water in a land, just like I had a plot in my plot, I had to find a bore well. So I had an expert who came to the sensor and told me that there is water here. And we had to open it there, so we got water. Now, similarly, mm. when the government is planning smart cities, the first thing they need to do before anything is to invite very expert real estate logisticians. Now I'm combining logistics with real estate. Real estate experts who are logisticians. Why? So that they can personally do an audit of accessibility, the cost of route management, people how they will material, how transport will be, scope kya hai, sustenance, ka, udar, um, garmi kitna hai, temperatures, kya hote hai, what are the diseases in that place. So if you are able to do that audit first before setting up logistics uh, uh, for the smart cities, then that makes sense. Because otherwise you will have the cart before the horse. You will, yeah. you will create the smart city and then realize that I built it in the wrong place. Yeah. Yeah, very nice, very very well put. Uh, I think uh, uh, this this is uh, kind of going to open uh, some new uh, thinking options for people who are looking at this. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, coming to the leadership and management uh, part, what do you think uh, the leadership lessons from your logistics experience have you applied to your uh, real estate ventures? See, I'm a cost accountant. So financial education is what I've had. However, I've gained a lot uh, through learning the art of management, uh, mm. application of financial knowledge, people management, and finally, time management. I think my wife has got a better intuitive skill to know what will work and what will not. But I have mm. logical ways of reaching the same conclusion, maybe. But I determine what investment will fetch me the X factor. I'll give you a simple example. When, when we wanted to invest in Hawaii, um, hmm. I, we, we debated should we invest in Hiranandani or other uh, major projects close to Hiranandani. Hmm. I decided yeah. to invest or we decided to invest in projects close to Hiranandani. Why? Because Hiranandani, once it's created, it's, it's expensive. And the other projects were at least 20% cheaper than what Hiranandani was selling it for. But what happened was, as a result of Hiranandani, the ability for other projects to use their infrastructure, their facilities, go through their roads, well-maintained buildings, well-maintained shops. What happened was our investment grew at the rate of average one time every year over the next 10 years. So it, it grew 10x because of the fact that, you know, there was a major infrastructure being created by Hiranandani. So it is also yeah. intuition. It is also your, uh, your ability to have gut feeling. Uh, yes. Remember, there is a book by Thomas Gladwell called Blink. In the Blink book, he says that your best decision is the one that you, that comes to you first in your heart. Yeah. yeah. Very so, correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, how do you uh, foster a culture of innovation and collaboration within your organization? So, all the organizations I managed were having employees more than 500 uh, in each of them. And I managed to do this successfully in the organization by realizing that it's people. From day one, I was clear about it. So hiring the right people with skills for today and tomorrow. If you hire right. only for today, then you're short-sighted. So I always believe that we must give some time to people in order to learn, grow, understand the culture. Now, be patient with people and not chase them to death. You have employed someone, so you put the road behind him, you put a target and you are saying that your evaluation is not right, you don't deliver. See, leverage your relationship with other functions. For example, in your organization, you have IT, real estate division, etc. Talk with them with them. So I ended up talking to the real estate division and I decided not to spend a rupee. I said, I am going to operate my business with zero investment. I will rent everything, construct it, by the real estate division of my group who had never constructed warehouses before. So I mm -hmm. helped them learn the art of warehouse construction. And they constructed mm -hmm. the warehouse and they leased it to me for 30 years. And the cost, cost was so cheap that I cannot imagine that I would have garnered permission from the board to invest that kind of money. Similarly, uh, keep an eye on competition. Know your customer by engaging continuously because you are building everything for them. 
if you build the wrong thing that the customers don't need, then you are in trouble. And then as a CEO, you need to ensure that the board is with you. So you have to tell them a story. And I mean, tell them a story that they will believe in. But then it is your responsibility to make that story happen. Yeah. Now, and so, uh, which country was that? Uh, uh, where you Dubai, go? Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, okay, Muscat, all the Middle East countries. Okay. Very nice. So, so instead of uh, going ahead and uh, uh, kind of taking uh, places on uh, rent, you would, uh, plan to develop your own. Yeah, within the group. But then, within so the group. group has got its asset, but that real estate division then rents it to me as an operating division. Yeah. yeah. Understand? So what happens is the group has got the, an asset that continues to grow in value. And I have yeah. a business that is costing me no capital. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, coming back to your uh, uh, criteria of evaluating real estate investment opportunities and how do you approach the development projects and uh, what factors contribute to their success? So I, I have invested in plots of land in um, uh, in commercial premises uh, in, in Ganga, for example. I've invested in uh, apartments, uh, expensive apartments to rent, rent them out. Uh, so the criteria is simple, cost of investment, whether I can afford it. And I don't want to borrow. I do not borrow money for investing. And secondly, ROI. What is the return that I will have? The return will be very small in terms of rent. It will be about 2%, 3% of the total capital. But hmm. how does simultaneously the value of the apartment or the property grow? I mean, that determines. And then how much is the growth and what is the period of the growth? You need to understand the blueprint of that area. So, example, Viman Nagar, I decided to invest because Viman Nagar at that time, many years ago, 10, 12 years ago, was uh, still uh, in a very slow start. And there were no IT buildings, no malls, no Phoenix, no, no nothing. So, once you talk around uh, to friends and colleagues and people in the industry, you realize that somebody's uh, got a contract to build a mall, somebody's uh, building um, a high-rise structure, somebody is building a supermarket like Dorabji. So slowly you realize that there is investment happening in support structure. So that yeah. information is absolutely necessary. And it is not a secret. You need to make your effort to look around. And last but not the least, you know, the demand for the facility and the price of this demand. So if you build uh, a high-class structure in a middle, low middle-class uh, area, then um, the, the upper middle-class uh, people are not going to come there. And, and yeah. you will be stuck with very small rents. So you need to understand the dynamics of uh, investment in this case. Yeah. So it, it's all about what to make where. Uh, in the past, developers have made this mistake of making a product which is not suitable to the locality. Absolutely. And they have failed miserably. Yeah. yeah. Many examples like that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about uh, sustainability and um, uh, the future outlook of uh, affordability and sustainability. Can you let us have your views on uh, how this sustainability and affordability uh, and social impact in real estate? I think the government plays a major role. Now, for example, in my house, uh, in my bungalow, I installed a Tata solar system and yeah. the government uh, gave me back 30% uh, subsidy as well mm -hmm. as the price of the time. And the uh, payback, I calculated the payback. If I were to reduce X amount of electricity every month, then the total payback will be so many years. So that yeah. payback calculation I did, and I built it right from the day one before we occupied the place. Same way, I think uh, real estate developers need to understand that it is no more a myth. Sustainability is here to stay. And therefore, they should offer warehouses with solar right, uh, uh, light provision right on the roof right from day one. Uh, yeah. uh, if you go to many warehouses, you will not even find windows uh, on the ceiling to let the yeah. sun, natural sun come in so that you reduce your cost of electricity. So basic yeah. things were not there. So now when you pair, build a warehouse, you need to be aware of the uh, all these um, investments. Do they have rain harvesting? Is there a place, uh, is there an appetite for tree and trees and greenery around? These have to be made compulsory. It is not anymore uh, like to have thing. It must be uh, part of the compulsive Attitude but towards, now, uh, now uh, as per the new norms, these are compulsory because we do deal in uh, logistics and warehousing also. And uh, uh, companies are looking at warehouses which have all these things because government has made it mandatory. Unless you have enough trees, the required uh, criteria, uh, they do not uh, give you the uh, sanctions or completion of that place. Unless you have solar, they, they don't do it. So all these things are in place. Uh, uh, rainwater harvesting is also compulsory. 
So that's I'm a very good to, thing. I'm very glad to hear this. I'm glad yeah. I'm out of touch yeah. with the with these uh, aspects of the business. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you've worked in uh, companies abroad and uh, you've got a hell lot of uh, experience on international uh, working. So can you tell us about your experience in working in these companies abroad and uh, the global uh, real estate trends? Okay. Now, uh, one of the most important learning that I have within my group of companies that I worked, which are all multinationals and very forward looking companies, they were high on sustainability and all other aspects of doing business today, many, many years ago. For example, uh, the uh, it's called office peacocking. Office peacocking means that you set up your offices in a way that it is friendly with the employees. That there is mm -hmm. a billiard pool in one corner, there is a table tennis thing in a corner, there's a coffee shop, there are sandwiches available, there are all kinds of uh, facilities within to make you comfortable within the, the company to work informally so that you give more productivity. This concept was introduced 20 years ago by me based on what I learned from my uh, uh, Merce Klein and others overseas how they had implemented. So I had implemented this 20 years ago and I'm seeing now this thing becoming part of today's reality in India. So we are already 20 years behind, correct? So uh, yeah. therefore, I think the standards of construction, for example, Merce is a shipping line. Yeah. Uh, the companies that I worked are shipping lines or FMCG companies. They had nothing to do with real estate, nothing to do with building, nothing. However, they had standard documentation, standardized documentation available to say the definition of the minimum expectation from the real estate developer. Mm. And they had, uh, they were not dictated by the real estate. They were dictating it to the real estate guys. Okay, this mm. is what I want. And then choosing the right location over a cheaper location, for example, mm -hmm. is a lesson that I learned. A right location, although a little bit more premium and expensive, is better in the long run than a cheap solution far away that, that will keep you away from the main market. So these are, you know, real estate um, learnings that I have and that the real estate's responsibility today is to promote these things to its customers, not uh, not let them come and demand of you. So if you promote it in the right way. So in order to promote your product in the right way, the most important thing, Kishanji, is to first understand what the customer wants. So if is, is the real estate developer ready to sit down? Is the real estate broker willing to sit down and listen to the customer? Exactly yeah. who you are, a personality profiling, understand yeah. your aspirations and then create what you create. Amazing. This is very correct. And uh, this I keep on talking in my videos and podcasts also that unless you understand uh, the requirement, you're just, you know, uh, giving your shots in the dark and the customer yeah. may turn you away and he may not even call you next time. Correct. So this uh, many brokers don't understand. But uh, uh, with education, probably these things are uh, coming exactly. to the fore now. Exactly. So Krishna ji, data is the new oil, as they say, uh, and data plays a very important role. As per you, what do you think is uh, the role of data analytics in uh, real estate decision making? Now, uh, I think we spoke about AI, blockchain, etc. technology yeah. we spoke about. However, yeah. we all know that all these run with data. Data is, uh, the, for example, in Google, there is some uh, AI being uh, incorporated. But AI is dated two years old that the information that Google has provided for AI, and I know this from uh, my friend who is uh, working for Microsoft, that the data is two years old, two to three years okay. old, which means that you do not have even the correct current data. Now, uh, I I would uh, require, uh, require you to understand that as a real estate uh, personality who is respected, uh, when you are able to reach out to all the real estate developers and the real estate brokers, one needs to understand yeah. that there is data, which is the king, which means that uh, somebody comes to you and asks you, I'm looking for a two bedroom apartment or a commercial space of X, or I want to build a warehouse of that size. What is your knowledge as a broker or as mm -hmm. a developer? What information do you have readily available? Or are you shooting in the dark? Chalo, gaadi mein baithte hain, hum log yaha wahan ghum ke aate hain. Aapko ye bhi dikhata hoon, wo bhi dikhata hoon, because isme commission zada mil raha hai mere ko. Isme ye khali pada hai bodhin se. Instead of that, if you ensure that at least one or two individuals in your office are collecting data, yeah, and 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 if there's a homogeneous data available by Rera, 
of yeah. everything homogeneously available to, yeah. to then then it is good so data collection is not only crucial but i think it is life saving in a, in a in a real estate business yeah so this uh, what you said is 100% right and we have experienced this over the past 3 decades when uh, i the got into a real estate business i had a, a background of industry my dad owned an industry and that is how we came from that background so uh, merging ourselves into this kind of an uh, thing was a little difficult for us into the brokering business because this wasn't organized at all oh. our industry is absolutely organized you know they talk black and white तब टाइप राइटर चलते थे टाइप राइटर से आपको पहले लेटर भेजना है ऑल दो थिंग्स आर वेरी सिस्टमेटिक यहाँ तो कुछ है नहीं इट्स ऑल वर्बल एंड टुमारो ए पर्सन कैन गो बैक ऑन देर ऑन इज और हर वर्ड सो सो वी वी काइंड ऑफ स्टार्टेड दिस डेटा कलेक्शन फ्रॉम फ्रॉम द डे आई अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस सो यू नो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ इट वॉज रेजिडेंशियल मार्केट सो टू थ्री फोर बी एच के अपार्टमेंट वॉट लोकेशन वुड देर बी क्या अवेलेबिलिटी देन वी वुड री वैलिडेट द डेटा so every month we would make calls to the same people again whether that property is still available yeah. so before offering to the client you have to offer live data aisa nahi ki aap offer to kar do fir dekhenge and then you tell the right. client nahi wo sorry wo to nikal gaya then why did you ah. offer Correct. it wasn't available so you know you're wasting somebody's time to go through that make up their mind you know it's a family decision emotional decision of uh, buying apartments so Absolutely. but then we we uh, very well uh, imbibed into our culture and uh, Uh, our systems were in place so i understand what you're saying this is 100% good and uh, new entrants into the real estate uh, brokerage sector must understand that data agar dhang se nahi rakhenge so uh, they'll be grappling in the dark aur unko jitni success milni chahiye bilkul nahi milegi and they'll get frustrated and move out of the system absolutely youngsters who want to start real estate brokering for example should yeah. spend at least 6 months to 8 months investigating yeah. their surroundings absolutely absolutely so yeah. let us come to uh, the some personal insights uh, what drives your passion for uh, real estate logistics well um, uh, i am not i did not have the luxury of choosing an industry when i was um, uh, young i started my working career huh. as a child when i was uh, just about in the 8th standard by giving tuitions because money was required in the house so when i grew up and i graduated from the commerce the reason why i even choose chose commerce and why kj somaya college at that time in ghatkopar was because kj somaya college was the only college available uh, which starts at 6 o'clock in the morning 6:30 and i wanted yeah. to go to a morning college so that i can go to work at 8 o'clock and and that was the need at that time and that was what dictated the choice of my college my degree and and the first company uh, also was a was a huge uh, coincidence of fate why did i get johnson and johnson as a because i did well and i be, i stood first in the in in the college um, in my commerce uh, graduation so that could be one of the reasons so now we don't have many choices however when we get what we get we have to make the best out of it and money took me to the middle east the re need for money and mersk was uh, offering me the job multinational industry that i was not used to uh, rugged place open yards but still money was there so uh, the only thing you can do is uh, make the best out of it and become best and then you earlier you said kishan ji that indians have the knowledge and the brains and the i yeah. completely agree but there is one thing missing and i learned it as early as when i was 27 28 and that was the ability to communicate the uh-huh. ability to communicate is so badly missing in many professionals of india that okay. they know the subject they know what the answer is but they are unable to present themselves to their seniors and that brings their uh, failure you know so i think so, uh, can you yeah. can you uh, uh, expand this uh, particular point more for example uh, i will um, let you know that in dubai i decided as a charitable cause to go from university to university college to college and address the students as a keynote mm-hmm. and train workshops and find out what is their issues what are their issues and i realized that communication was and i used mm-hmm. to teach them communication uh, skills how to develop it 
uh, during their college because I told them that in a college classroom, you are 35, maybe 30 or 40 people of your own age. They're all of the same age. All are known, all are friends. But the moment you step out of the college and you go to uh, a job, and the job will have people from 18, 19 years to 65, 70 years age, all coming yeah. from different backgrounds, different temperaments. Nobody knows each other. And, and, and then you find it a big struggle. And that's the reason why a lot of uh, uh, young professionals languish in organizations without promotions, without making through, because they are not able to write a simple CV. They are not able mm -hmm. to create a brand. So as soon as you realize that you are a brand, you need to sell yourself. I must. And, and, and that's what I teach in my, in my consulting. And I go to various places and I'm invited by uh, the chambers of commerce and many organizations to uh, do courses for them, to do workshops, to improve the ability to communicate. Very nice. I'm really happy that uh, we brought this out and this uh, this plays a very significant role in with real estate uh, services, real estate brokerage business. Absolutely. Because uh, every real estate broker is a brand in himself and the faster, the sooner he or she realizes, the more better for their uh, company or their uh, establishment. Absolutely. Yeah. Sir, um, can you share a particular uh, successful project that you worked on uh, during our tenure? Yeah, so one of the largest projects I initiated within my company, which was managing as a CEO, was the creation of a container facility. The facility mm -hmm. was 1 million square feet with warehouses in it, integrated offices in it, and a whole lot of, for example, refrigerated uh, cargo handling, uh, yeah. maintenance and repair of uh, transport truck trucks, maintenance yeah. and repairs of shipping line containers, all facilities housed in a 1 million square feet facility. And that was the, the biggest project I ever created uh, when I was young. And then after that, I repeated the project again uh, elsewhere in another company. So uh, I, I, can, I can tell you many things about the project, but that will require uh, even more podcast time. Yeah. <laughs> sure. So, uh, no, it's it's uh, very nice. And these facilities that you created for or, or designed for these companies were in Dubai again? Where you yeah, in, not in, in Saudi Arabia, for Merck's line. For Merck's only, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, good. You got a lot of free hand to uh, kind of show uh, your uh, potential yeah. there. Remember, remember that uh, I told you that you need to know how to tell a story and then yeah. to live up the story. Yes. <laughs> So, amazing. Sir, um, any parting advice uh, to our listeners who are interested in getting into real estate or logistics and warehousing? Because this sector is now looking up and there are a whole lot of people who can embrace this and uh, make their livelihood out of this. Absolutely. I think they can. Uh, you have to realize that the people who enter this industry start with a single intention. How can I make money? How can I make more commission? Yeah. Instead of that, I recommend that you should first find out, think through, and decide what is the difference you are willing to make. Right yeah. Now, the advice that I would like to give is not one, but a couple more. Uh, so collaboration. If you're working mm. in isolation, no man is an island, then mm. you will fail. So in, in my opinion today, the need of the hour is, is collaboration. Collaboration mm. between real estate developers, collaboration between real estate brokers, collaboration mm. between real estate developers and brokers, and so collaboration is the key, according to me. Mm -hmm. And there is a need to create education in the industry. Uh, a university degree in real estate is, is crucial and important. And within your organization, it is important to train your people. You have to look at them as valuable assets. You have mm -hmm. to uh, develop management team and potential leader with management and leadership skills. Mm -hmm. and, and you need to use social media responsibly. People hire the services of uh, uh, social media creators, uh, yeah. content creators and they create fascinating uh, pictures buildings which are not true which are not real yeah. so integrity and honesty is a long-term virtue and then i need everybody to understand this and the last but not the least important uh, advice i would give uh, which uh, is is uh, actually the consultancy that i offer is get ready for disruption don't believe for a moment that you will be in the business for the next so many years something else will happen and your business will be disrupted. Uh, you will be out of business. So how do you manage 
to create a strategy around the disruption to meet the disruption i'll so, take a minute on this uh, on the disruption this is a very important uh, topic that you touched upon yeah uh, in real estate uh, people were absolutely uh, stagnant uh, they were lethargic they would not want to change unless uh, the tech came into play the moment the tech came into play disruption started like what right. happened to the, the cab service uber or ola came in what right. happened to the delivery service zomato and these people came in a swiggy came in uh, similarly they tried to do something with real estate up to certain extent they were successful because the markets opened up primary market opened up and uh, tech companies did command uh, the major share and they took it over uh, from the those uh, complacent people who are not willing to change and not willing to adapt to the uh, new segment of this and then they were crying foul saying that you know this is not done and i do remember people who wanted to sue these uh, tech companies for uh, uh, doing this disruption so uh, any thoughts on this absolutely i mean i think you're talking about no broker uh, i think one of the classic uh actions taken by no broker for example to point in case no broker has become a case study in management colleges in iim as well and one mm-hmm. of the classic decisions they made was to uh, do their work free of cost without adver- advertisements without offering um, gold membership this membership silver ch- subscription etc for nearly 2 years 3 years mm-hmm. once they had earned the trust of the people then they started building the brand today no broker i hired their services uh, if you go to the real estate guy who, who is uh, in the corner in pawai and tell him ke baba aapko pata hai ke koi painter hai koi plumber hai koi batao kuch bolta nahi sir aapko dhoonna padega so aap no broker ke paas jao ab no broker ke paas sab kuch hai they mm-hmm. have a to z services right from cleaning fixing electric bulbs chota chota kaam carpet cleaning every facility you can think within the real estate and mm. that makes them valuable because you have a one stop shop and you are able to uh, justify your charges which is much lower than what you don't have to go running around looking for people i mean this is a great point in uh, example similarly jio i will give you an example of jio to draw a parallel here that jio when they introduce free sim cards for use for one year and they extended it by one more year So what was um, Mukesh Ambani doing? He was making people addicted, like drugs, to Jio. So he took two years to give free services, cost him crores of rupees. One fine day he launched Jio, and today it's the biggest, correct? So uh, there are disruptors sitting in the fence and watching and listening to our conversations, our behavior, and and finding out what is it that you don't do. or what is it that you don't do well well exactly uh, i would just yeah. like to uh, uh, talk a little bit about uh, that no broker thing uh, because this subject was brought in in our associations also so yeah. barring the name that they should not have used no broker uh, they they could have used something else which which was uh, uh, taken cognizance of uh, rest of the things anybody and everybody is free they are it, we are a democratic setup we can do what we want uh our people are unable to provide all these services because usually it's a mom and pop shop they individual brokers small time people they've just begun their thing and uh in developed countries you have associations holding them uh, hand holding them like Correct. the national association or the regional associations are there and india we have some more time before we get into the play and uh, hand hold uh, the individual uh, brokers on all these fronts but sooner or later we are going to go that way and uh, i'm sure a day would come then our individual brokers also uh, can uh, offer these services to their clients yeah absolutely i hope so and uh, uh, they say that kal kare so aaj kar aaj kare so ab pal bhar mein pralay hove bahuri karega kab kab absolutely to ruko nahi karo abhi se yes yes so uh, krishna ji thank you very much we had a lovely interaction very good talk and i'm sure there is lot of take away uh, for uh, our viewers and uh, uh, your uh, understanding your experience your teachings are going to 
uh, go a long way in people's mind who uh, would embrace whatever uh, sector they are into, whatever field they are into. मुझे हंड्रेड परसेंट श्योरिटी है कि इसका अनुभव और इसका फायदा लोग जरूर लेंगे थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी टू दिस टॉक किशन जी प्लेजर थैंक यू